it's the hits and the misses. Uh, this week it was tough because there was a couple of teams that really stood out as candidates for a hit. And uh, us being the generous people that we are at Stat Chat Sports, uh, we want to give a bit of love to some teams that are doing well. Uh, we're going to talk about two teams today. First of which, one of the hosts of Gather Round, the Adelaide Crows, Taz. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, it's not Port Adelaide, the other host. But yeah, we will talk <laughs> about Adelaide. Um, they are proving you wrong, Josh. They are. You, you, you've been made to look like a bit of a fool here. They are looking extremely good. And a huge win against Carlton on uh, on Thursday night there. That was, I mean, that was so quick out of the blocks. It was unreal. Yeah, look, I, I can't deny this, fellas. And we might touch on this later on in the show. Um, but it was a terrible call by me. I said Adelaide was cooked and they've come out uh, three in a row, BT. It's, it's <laughs> while you haven't been on the show. Adelaide have started cooking. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but they look phenomenal, actually. They look like a good final team. Like how they played, was it 2017 when they made the grand yeah. final? That highly attacking team. Like, when they got four players who have kicked ten, more than 10 goals this season. Yeah. That's just unreal. Probably the best forward in forward combination in the comp at the moment. And has it, you, we did talk about this in our pre season video that Adelaide, looking like they had the best forward line in the competition. You actually called me out in our group chat and said I, I, I was talking shit about you, but I, I agree with you. They got some good pieces there. I, I know someone Someone said I was, it was a shit call. I can't remember, but yeah. Look, oh, I, uh, 100%, i got to stick by that now. It's it's a very it's a very potent forward line, and it's such a good spread. I mean, it, it's so hard to... You shut one down. I mean, Rankin got shut down really on the weekend, and they still got blitzed, Carlton. So, I mean, Newman did an absolute job and they still got torn apart. So, we're talking about the forward line. We've got some stats here about the forward line, which I think is really indicative of where they're at. So, Big T, they're the number one team in the AFL Mm -hmm. for converting inside 50s into scores. And that leads right into what you're saying. They've got four potent weapons up there that can mark the footy and can do the damage. So, they're, they're efficient going inside 50. And then on the flip side of that, which I thought was really interesting, they're last in the competition for forward pressure and tackles inside 50. And that is because they're just clunking the footy. They're just delivering it in beautifully, hitting their targets and kicking their goals. And they're hitting the target. They're not hitting the targets on on the 50 or on the 45. They're hitting them pretty deep and pretty central a lot of these targets as well, which which is where you want to take these marks. And Fogarty, Big Das, number one in the comp for marks inside 50 per game. First game back on the weekend, Tazza, and he looks a million bucks. And this is what Adelaide fans have really wanted to see from the Foghorn. Yeah, he was part of my bold prediction, which didn't quite go, but he absolutely held up his end of the bargain of that. Um, unfortunately, Rankin didn't, but he's just such a huge frame. Him and Tex, oh. they're so imposing. I mean, with two blokes that can just run and crash back. Well, they don't crash back, so they clunk marks. That's the thing, but if they're not clunking them, they're absolutely crashing pack. So it's hard to see any defence really getting a hold of this forward line all year. They've got all the weapons. Yeah, that's a big call, Taz. I mean, they do have a couple of big chassis down there, and we do like it, but that is that is a big call, I've got to say. Uh, chat lining mm-hmm. up here. Chat lining up here, and I like it. Our man Cobloaf is in the uh, in the chat. Uh, good areas. Area check one, two, and I think that's uh, courtesy of our man BT backing on here. Crows can foreplay and also finish the job. Erotic footy. Uh, that's a little bit of stat chat after dark. <laughs> yeah, we've got low records. Um, but I do like it. Uh, Jordan Dawson, BT. Can we talk about Jordan Dawson? Hey. He's, he's captain. Yeah. He's oh, arguably probably the best. One, well, I'd say top five, because there is a lot of good players. Top five in the comp at the moment with what he's doing. And first year as a captain, he's definitely stood up to that role. Yeah. He's been phenomenal. Averaging... Well, we got 25 touches and 550 metres gained. That's just unreal. Yeah. Uh, Lens uh, in the comments, very happy with that. Uh, got him close to his bold prediction, and we'll get to the bold predictions, Lens. Don't worry about that. We, we saw it. We noted it. It was a good effort by you. Um, but Jordan Dawson, Tazza, has jumped out the blocks. If we're picking women, he's definitely there, I think, on the wing in the All-Australian team. And... I saw the there was a bit of a stat that came up on uh, in the socials. It wasn't really a stat, but it was more a story, I think, uh, in the last couple of days, Tazza. And it was about Dawson, Rochelle, and Rankin. They're the three players that came into the club off the back of 
Adelaide not doing the trade for JHF with North. And geez, doesn't that look handy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it, it, they could have gone in a completely different direction. And they're absolutely reaping the rewards out of that. Um, uh, it seems everyone that kind of removes themselves from the, from Horn Francis benefits. The Roos are benefiting now. Um, <laughs> it doesn't bode well for Port, but yeah, <laughs> Adelaide, absolutely. I mean, why would you give up three first-round picks anyway? It was a bit ridiculous. I, I can't believe North didn't take it. But, yeah. I mean, geez, they are absolutely head and shoulders above in, in that trade. Probably the only people benefiting, I think, from the lack of JHF uh, in the area would be your local petrol stations, your servos. The sales of ice bags are going through the roof <laughs> now that JHF is gone. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, you went a roundabout way yeah. of getting that joke. <laughs> but I got there. But I got, got there. there. I, I, I made my way back. <laughs> um, there you go. Look, there's the Crows, and, and certainly a very good hit. But we've got two today. Uh, we've got two today, and Lenza did mention it in the chat, um, the Bombers. The Bombers with a huge hit, and they're an easy call, BT, as a hit this week, because uh, I speak for myself here. I don't think I speak for everyone in this chat. No one saw this coming. No, no chance at all. I thought they've had a reasonably easiest run, and then they're coming up against who we think is one of the premiership favourites, and they've won that game pretty easily in the end. But it's, they actually look phenomenal. And that wasn't even that Marvel or the MCG. So when they play majority of the games in Melbourne, they, they're going to be hard to beat. They're going to be pushing this top six, top four. Are you serious? Team. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know about that. I mean... They've got it all. My boy, Andrew Phillips. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's not my the boy ginger, now. He won me, won me a Phillips. ticket into the... Into the draft starts final, we want me to take it into that. So. Yeah, do, do we want to talk about that right now? Is are you happy talking about this? Let's. I'm happy to talk about it. Okay, let, let's let's hold Essendon for a little bit. Right. <laughs> uh, so BT, over your left shoulder, right there, you have a, yeah. a a draft stars promotion, and and obviously you don't gamble. And if no, if, don't gamble. If, if draft stars is watching, right, we would love a little bit of sponsorship maybe on the side. Uh, but we're not going there right now. Tell us about your draft sales experience over the weekend. So I entered a competition where you get win a ticket into the live, into our final, which is at the end of the year. The prize pool, well, the prize pools are on those boxes from the last previous two years, which I won, got a ticket into. Bit of a brand. So you have to win. It's fantasy related. So you have to win the competition to get into that competition. So this is my third year in a row, like, Come on, like, are you really surprised? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm surprised because your fantasy team's terrible. Yeah, oh, it is. <laughs> it's shit. Um, but it came down. I won pretty comfortably in the end, but the big pick I had was Andrew Phillips from Essendon. He was, like, basement price. And if you're here at stats, so here I'll talk about his stats. So it's points per dollar. Equivalent for so Andrew Phillips was a basement price, so he a 50 from him was equivalent to 125 from Tim English. So obviously, went that route and um, he ended up scoring a 74, his biggest score for the season, and that's what my man hardly anyone had him in his team. Well, there you go. So, what does this put you in the in the running for? Is there a, is there a, is there a top prize here? So, $750,000 prize. Oh. Two hundred grand for first. <laughs> All right. So Jeez. okay. So to our man thousand, BT, thousand dollars for last. Okay. Our man BT's cashed up, and we love that. And he could be bankrolling this podcast into the next couple of seasons. <laughs> we love to see that. So again, not a plug for draft stars because we're not sponsored. But if they are watching and they'd like to sponsor us, uh, give us a call. Now back to the bombers. The bombers were excellent. We were talking about Essendon here as a potential finals smoky. There's a few comments in the chat here um, saying that uh, saying that they're still not convinced. And no, I'm not convinced, Tazza. I'm not convinced at all. Yeah, no, I'm not convinced. I mean, there's a good... There's no reliance on anyone for the goals here, I think. Um, they're definitely getting a good spread. Uh, and they, they need to because that forward line's pretty average, I'm going to say. I mean... 
the lack of a key forward there is the going to hurt them. Lack of two meter Peter is a, is a problem. Yeah, exactly. I, I think he's out. Is he out for the not season, but it's a good a, chunk of it? It's a while, uh, but yeah. someone in the chat let us know because yeah, it's, he's. I don't think he's coming back anytime soon. Yeah. I think Sam so, Draper is up there. Yeah, the drapes, <laughs> the curtain. Yeah. He's going unbelievable. That, that Sammy Draper Phillips little rotating combo that was very good. Five that stacks. really worked in their favour, and it really exposed the lack of um, lever for that Melbourne team, mm. uh, that Melbourne de- defence. It's just yeah, it was a, a absolute um, huge win for Brad Scott there. Yeah, so let, let's okay. Let, let's not go on the dampener because I'm still not sold on Essen. But let's talk about how good they were on the day. Seven unanswered goals. Uh, across a stretch there in the second and the third, and that broke this game open, and that's what won in the game. Uh, I want to talk about Will Setterfield a little bit, BT, because he's been a bargain basement pickup for the Dons, and he's having a really good impact to start the year. Well, he played practically had had Clayton Oliver on the weekend. He kept Oliver to 11 disposals in the first half. Yeah. And if you're doing that in the first half of the game to one of the best players in the competition, that goes a long way to winning the game. To be fair, Oliver ended up having 34 or something for the game. 40 plus. He went, he went off in the third yeah. quarter. Yeah. yeah. So, But that first half is where it set Essendon up for the game, keeping him to that. He had no impact, really. Um, but he And he's finding the ball himself. He's yeah. absolute killer pickup for Essendon. Yeah, and getting stuck in, he's a contested beast. He's fourth in the AFL for tackles. Uh, I think he was only one behind the leaders. Uh, and career highs in disposals and all, all these other categories. So this is just the opportunity that he needed, and he's standing up and he's delivering, and he's playing a really important role for the Dons, and I think that's worth highlighting. So um, Setterfield playing well, the Dons playing well. Are they a finals contender? Are they a finals chance? That's the question that we want to know. Let us know in the chat, in the comments below. Dons making finals off the back of their start? Yeah, really interested to see how that plays out. Top four. Oh, oh, settle down, BT. Oh, settle down. Shit call. Have you got a guarantee on that or not? Oh, I'm not guaranteeing that. <laughs> uh, quick little roundup of the chat before we get to our Miss Cobblife record says the Don's days since they won a final account on Twitter has gone very quiet, and that makes him very nervous. I agree. Uh, Chunky Wombat, that's a new name I haven't seen in the chat before. He's, uh, good to see you on board, mate. And he says, BT, I like your head. A lot See, of love. That's why he's tuning in. A lot that's of love coming in for BT uh, being back on the call. Uh, to we- what was his name again? To wish. To uh, Tarfy. 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 Thinking you're on the source, and um, that may or may not be, that may or may not be true. Uh, Lens are not convinced that they're a top eight team, um, and he's he tipped Melbourne, but at Anson and won obviously, and Anzac Day should be a good game. So um, there we go. Now. Let's talk about the miss. And what we like to do with the miss is we've been putting it out to the people. The Stat Chat podcast, we are a podcast of the people. We love the feedback. We love hearing from you guys. And we asked you on YouTube last night. I actually put it out a bit earlier than we usually do. We put it out last night. And we said, who is the most disappointing team for the round? Uh, we gave you a few options. We we gave you Richmond. We, we gave you North. Um, we, we gave you Melbourne. Melbourne wasn't the most disappointing team of the round. It was Carlton. Carlton on the Thursday night against Adelaide, losing by almost 10 goals, and, and, and they were a worthy, I say a worthy winner. You can't really be the winner, but they were a worthy recipient of the miss with about 40-odd percent of the vote. So uh, let, let, let's talk about them. Tazza, Carlton, very poor, and they had been previously undefeated through the first four weeks. Yeah, I was never convinced that they were the real deal. I mean, they were they were limping to wins. They should have lost to GWS um, a couple of weeks ago. That was that was definitely um, the warning signs were there. Absolutely, and I haven't seen Cripps beaten that badly in a one on one matchup he, probably in his career. Because Dawson had his way all night with him mm. and was just made to, to. It was just following him basically. Because I mean, Dawson's probably had his best game and Cripps his worst. It was pretty embarrassing. You can tell but, Cripps hasn't had a um, pre-season. And let's, oh, yeah, no. No, he, he's so far behind it. And let's take into account uh, Sammy Walsh's first game back, and the jury's still out on how those two play in the same team together because Cripps, Cripps is obviously better when Walsh isn't there because he's getting more of the footy. So 
I don't think that the Blues have really sorted that out yet. Well, Walsh was probably best on for Carlton. He was one mm. of their better players. He was everywhere from what I saw. But a 56-point loss, that was that looks generous. They actually they should have lost quite more. They, yeah. That didn't look like that. They didn't have a chance at all. At all. It yeah. was over in the first quarter. Yeah, it was over very early. Um, the ruck situation and in the middle, which is usually an area of strength for the Blues, they got monstered. So uh, down 26 in the hitouts and 26 in the contested possessions, Tazza. Um where do we where do we think Carlton's at? Do we do we overreact to this performance, or is this, as you said, a bit more of a trend because they might have been showing some signs of slippage in the first month anyway? Well, I mean, yeah, they're an undefeated team, but I, I, they they were never a top four team. Well, they're, they're probably I, I, a, tipped a, him. I tipped them for top four. Yeah. No, no, or well, not not on this. I out of this game, I'm definitely not picking them as a top four team. Absolutely not. They're probably a top eight team, but they're not hitting those heights. Not after something like that. I mean, Doherty was a huge loss in that game too. Probably lost a lot of control mm. down in that back line. Um, but, yeah, I it, that, the midfield's their strength. It's meant to be where they're their deepest. Hewitt, Kennedy, um, Cripps, Walsh, I mean, Chera. They bat so deep, and they just got absolutely monstered by a Sydney team that's meant to be in a, in a rebuild. So... Oh, Sydney, sorry, Adelaide. Mm. Um, so that's worrying in itself. That I, I'm not sure. Obviously, Carlton's midfield on their day is great, but if they're going to put in those kind of performances, it's pretty worrying. So they do have a decent... Well, I say decent. I think it's probably a, quite a defining next month. So uh, they've got the Saints coming up this week. That'll be a huge game. Uh, the Eagles away. Don't even worry about that one. Uh, and then Brisbane and the Dogs at home. So... Uh, it's going to be interesting how this goes. I mean, you could easily see the... Well, really, you'd probably think the Blues are coming away with two to three wins in this, but what we want to see, BT, really, is is how they play. Is it inconsistent how they have been probably the first month? Or is this really the job that they needed to, you know, turn things up a notch? It seems like they're relying a lot on one of these big key forwards to have, like, a monster game. And if you're just relying on that for a season, you're going to lose a fair few games and you're not going to finish top four. So I think they need to start relying on more of these smaller type R forwards and midfielders need to start keeping more goals. I think that's what they need. Which, and then obviously, your Mackay and your Kerno are going to keep your goals, but if you can add on top of that, then that's what will get you the wins. And they've got good small forwards on their list. I mean, mm-hmm. Motlop, uh, he's sort of primed for a breakout in his second year. Um, Fisher's good. Uh, Owies is uh, always a bit average, but they, they've got a few guys around there uh, that can fill a role. So uh, Durden as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's they've got the names there. Yeah. They've got the names there, mm. but they just need to put it all together. Uh, chat is a bit undecided about Carlton. Lens are saying Carlton definitely not top four. He agrees with you, Tazza. Uh, Hazza says they're not top four at the moment, and Chunky Wombat saying Cripps is overrated. Um, Big call for a uh, well, the reigning Brownlow medalist, I guess. Um, there you go, hits and misses. Nice way to start up the episode, boys. Uh, liking this, some good energy, some good feedback as well from the chat, uh, and we like that. Keep it coming. Mm-hmm.